Hey gang, Bronco Carl 92 here. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix a blown out rear freeze plug on a 6BT Cummins 12 valve engine. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the rear freeze out plug on my 95 Dodge 2500 Cummins engine. Um, I was out the other night horsing around and as I was going around to turn the back of the truck kind of slipped out a little bit and looked, I looked behind me and I noticed there was a lot of um, liquid or something coming out from the truck um, and I found that the rear freeze plug had popped out of the engine. Um, come to find out that this is actually uh, kind of a common issue since the uh, the that plug I guess has a lot of uh, like water pressure on it I guess especially at uh, higher engine RPM. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, what I'm going to do to to fix this uh, this issue without having to pull the motor or, or the transmission. All right, actually, so while I was uh, fishing around under the truck looking to see how I'm going to do this, I um, actually took a look up in the uh, skid plate here. There's the freeze plug that popped out. All right, so like from what I uh, like what I said, um, I've read that this seems to be kind of a, a common problem. Um, the freeze plug is not really that rotted, but it doesn't look like it was in the uh, the back of the engine very well. Um, so I did an internet search about rear freeze plug diameter because I just wanted to try to get a new freeze plug. And uh, industrial injection makes this um, bolt-on plate here. So it's a piece that's cut out of aluminum, comes with a couple of bolts. And uh, it's packaged nicely. And it has this nice thick Viton O-ring here. So apparently you just uh, stick this in the back of the engine, bolt it into place, and you're good. So um, I'm going to have to get under there. I'm going to have to clean up the, uh, the hole that the freeze plug goes in, that this was in, because uh, it needs a nice clean surface so this O-ring actually seals and doesn't get cut. And I'm going to use a thread chase and um, clean out the two holes that these bolts are going to go in. So. Um, let me get the camera under there and uh, show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, so to clean the hole, my weapon of choice is going to be a angled die grinder with a uh, 120 grit flap wheel on here. Now, the idea is we're not going to um, look to open the hole up. We're just looking to just polish the surface and put a little chamfer on it so this O-ring over here doesn't get screwed up and so it seals nicely. Um, I also have a uh, M12 by 1.75 um, thread chaser. Um, a ratchet with a, uh, a socket and then a three-quarter inch wrench here to put these bolts in. They're 19 millimeter, three-quarter and 19 are about the same size. So um, so let me get the camera set up underneath and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to work. Okay, so this is kind of a, a tough shot to get, but hopefully you get the idea. So first thing we're going to do is... I'm going to clean this hole out, thread chase. And I hope I'm not blocking the light. Probably am though. To the other hole. Alright, 
next we're gonna clean the hole. Okay, so now we fit the plate in place. Now, the plate is offset, so I've marked it with an L on the driver's side. And the instructions say with just a little pressure, it should pop into place. All right, well, it's uh, several hours later. Um, I did run into a little problem. Um, the bolt hole on the passenger side of the rear of the engine that the plate attaches to, um, I guess from 20 years of not having a bolt in it, um, the threads were kind of beat. Um, I ran a tap into them. Excuse me, I ran a tap into the threads. And um, they seemed all right, but as soon as I put a bolt in there, the threads crumbled. And uh, it was kind of a pain in the neck. I actually wound up having to go out and get a, a time cert kit and uh, tap and uh, put a uh, thread insert in there, which between the firewall and the back of the engine was uh, not really an easy endeavor, um, but I got it done. So um, anyway, what's a time cert set? Okay, this is a time cert set. So a time cert is basically a threaded insert and um, what you do is you, uh, you use the drill bit that they give you and you open the hole up and you use this counter bore here and the counter bore basically makes a little chamfer for this to fit into and then it has a special tap right here that's the size of the thread insert and then an installation screw which is like a um, I don't know how you describe it, but it's a it's a misformed bolt that once you thread you thread that into here, and once you thread this in, it gets to the end. And I don't know if you can see this, but the end of the time cert here really doesn't have a thread on it. So once you get to the end, that bolt will actually push through and deform the end of this and force this to stay in there. So anyway, that's what I had to do to fix the um, the hole. So. Let's uh, get some coolant in here and uh, get the truck started. Okay, so we're using pre-mixed uh, pre um, Prestone 50-50. The cooling system capacity of the truck is 24 quarts. That's six gallons. I expect that it's gonna take at least four, uh, judging by the amount of coolant I saw on the road and the fact that every time I took the truck on and off the trailer, it uh, spilled more out, so. Just drinks it like nothing. Okay, this is gallon number four. The upper hose still doesn't seem to have anything in it. See some bubbling. Oh. 
So now I suppose we'll start it and uh, let all this circulate. test um, everything seems to be working properly I got good heat uh, I don't have any leaks it took about uh, four and a half gallons of coolant to uh, fill the uh, system back up so anyhow as always thanks for watching Bronco Carl 92 and uh, we'll see you again soon take care